a log roller of mass 640 kilograms at the top of its hill, which is a height of 30 meters. Calculate the loss in potential energy as the log roller descends the 30 meters, and B, the velocity at the bottom of the hill, assuming that there's no energy loss due to air resistance or friction. So let's just have a look at a short video about this to begin with. So here we got our log rider. What we've got here is a log rider with two people in it. And what's going to happen is log rider is going to go from the top here down to the bottom here. Now at the top, it has what's known as potential energy, which is given by MGH. And the height that they're going to drop through is going to be 30 meters. We're going to say it's 30 meters. And we're going to say that the weight of the log rider plus the two riders in it is 640 kilograms. And acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second. Now what happens is that the log rider is going to go down the slope. As it goes down the slope, it's going to lose potential energy. And what it's going to do is going to gain kinetic energy. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume in this that there is no energy loss for the friction between the uh, rider and the, the water and the path it's going down, or that it loses energy due to air resistance. And so here it goes down, going down the slope here. Losing its potential energy and it's, what it's doing is gaining kinetic energy. So it's now got to the bottom of the uh, rider, so it's dropped through a height of 30 meters. Its kinetic energy is going to be a half mv squared, and we still have the weight being 600 kilograms. And gravity is still 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that should allow us to be able to calculate this here should now be layered because if there's no energy loss from the top to the bottom, assuming that we had no friction or air resistance, then this will allow us to calculate the velocity of which you should now see. Okay, just one correction that the 640 kilograms. Carrying on. So there's, here's a diagram of the situation, same thing at the top, it has potential energy, PE, MGH, given by MGH. At the bottom, when it gets to the bottom here, it has kinetic energy, a half MV squared. The assumption, of course, it, the energy is conserved, provided that no, there's been no energy loss to air resistance and or friction, which will obviously probably happen. So... The potential energy is equal to mgh, so that's equal to 640 times 9.8 gravity times the height it drops through, which is 30. So it, potential energy at the top will be 188,160 joules, or 188.16 kilojoules, if you prefer. And B, now calculating the velocity, Assuming there's no energy loss due to friction or air resistance, then the energy is conserved. So the kinetic energy will be equal to a half mv squared. So that's going to be a half times 640 times v squared will be equal to the same amount of energy, because we're assuming it's not been none of it's been lost. So it's 188,160 joules. And if we rearrange that, we're going to get the V squared is 588, and then the actual velocity will be the square root of that, which is 24.2 meters per second. Okay, so the energy will be conserved, okay, in, in this case, because we've, we've actually made this assumption that there is nothing due to air resistance or friction. Okay, so there's been a video to show you about the principle of conservation of energy.